and loving this. In this video, I really am putting my own t-shirt slogan to the test, available at hubnut.org. Power, less is more. Is that true? I'm gonna drive this Australian British built 2CV to find out. Oh yes, this is a moment I've looked forward to for a very long time. Um, what we have in front of us is a British built 2CV. It was built in Slough um, in a factory that got taken over by Mars, the chocolate bar manufacturer, bizarrely. But for a time, it's where um, the B Brits assembled Citroens and Traction Advance, uh, even DSs, and um, for a time, 2CVs. Now, the 2CV was not a particularly successful enterprise. It was just too odd, which is why they came up with the Bijou, the little coupe, to try and give it wider appeal in Britain. But um, yeah, Brits weren't that impressed with the 2CV they just thought they were too odd too unusual this crazy front wheel drive nonsense um, would never catch on so they thought um, but the cars had to have a certain amount of local content so uh, there's an awful lot going on here and this is going to take a while to go through it may get a bit boring it could get a bit anoraki um, i should start with the indicators which are more recent additions for a sensible but perhaps not the most aesthetic um, solution um, you could say. Also, we are on 15 inch wheels. These are later wheels. Uh, they originally came on 16 inch wheels, but they do look like the correct hubcaps. Uh, I believe the hubcaps and the front bumper are Morris Minor. Certainly the front bumper is um, slightly modified. The headlamps, um, I think they were Butler headlamps. Um, yep, yeah, Butlers. There we go. In um, England. Birmingham, in fact. Oh, Brummy headlamps. Lovely. And uh, we've got this front drive badge. Citroen were quite proud of their front drive heritage. They tried to really make it a feature by fitting this bonnet emblem not seen on 2CVs anywhere else in the world. Otherwise the um, structure and um, the, the running gear is fairly standard 2CV. Um, we'll get and look at that in a minute but um, other things that set it aside we've got a wing mounted mirror which is completely hopeless they were fitted to the vans primarily because otherwise you couldn't see anything at all um, we've got suicide front doors for open like so just like the french ones but what we have that isn't like the french ones is this opening rear window these were never fitted to the french ones they only ever had front opening windows and uh, i'm delighted to see this sticker uh, it would be amazing if this car actually had gone to an international two c meeting of 2CV friends. It all began in Finland in 1975, apparently. Um, but yeah, we've got, uh, th this is how they originally attached. It was just a rubber buffer, but you can see the buffers wear, and so the window drops down. Um, and it latches just on that little catch there, which it patently isn't doing. Oh, I think it has done now, so it's now caught. There we go, it's now locked. Um, on the front, the owner has fitted the um, later style clicky switches, um, which are a bit more secure. There is also an external opening roof. Um, if I drop the window momentarily, you, you pull this and um, in theory, the roof releases. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to. I'm not going to try and force it. It's a very old roof. I don't really want to play with it um, all that much. But it hasn't got the canvas boot lid that um, later um sorry earlier two cvs had and i think the um english ones were the first to have a proper boot lid otherwise the roof just continued down to the bottom and you rolled up um, the canvas boot lid to get in uh, the belgians also soon cottoned on to this the boot is locked we shall look at it momentarily the original rear lights are here again supplemented by the modern indicators and again just standard um, lucas lamps i would imagine uh, they seem to have faded slightly to orange here. And again, this rear bumper, I'm not sure what it's off, but it would have been a UK supplied item and um, possibly the um, fuel cap as well. Is that a locking fuel cap? Oh, it is. Oh, that's lovely. Um, but um, we should probably start by looking under the bonnet. And the bonnet release itself is different to um, later 2CVs. In the, hello, Shadow. You, you turn this little catch down here, I believe. 
It's a bit difficult to do one-handed, apparently. And having released the bonnet, it goes up onto its little latch up there. Um, so that's all good. Unlike the later ones, these ripple bonnets, the, the bonnet sides come up with the bonnet, which means you just get the starting handle, four bolts, wings off, jobs are good. And here is the engine. The engine is a 425cc air-cooled flat twin. This is an evolution of the original engine um, for these cars. Um, seems to be missing a bit of cowling, I think. I think there should be a bit of cowling um, over there to take the heat of this pipe, only one of which seems present. So you've got some form of heating going on. But yeah, 12 brake horsepower produced by this little 425cc engine. A cute little dipstick just there. Uh, yes, I assume there's some oil on it. That's very hot because we may have already been for a drive. I may be recording this out of sequence and I'm now completely giving it away. Um, we do have some slight issues um, with these cars, which I can probably demonstrate under here. No, I can't. Um, ah, there it is. Universal joints on the drive shafts, um, not CV joints. So that can cause snatching as you go around tight bends, as we um, will see on the um, test drive. Um, well, hopefully we won't, because hopefully I'll avoid it, but I will talk you through it. Um, the starter control is quite amusing. It is this cable, which goes to a button on the dashboard, which we'll see. And all that does is operate this um, lever on the starter motor. So if I just make sure she's in neutral, so I don't run myself over. Yeah, I think we're in neutral. Um, you can actually start the engine from under the bonnet. Um, you, you, you do have to turn the ignition on. So that's the ignition turned on. And then I'm just going to stand to the side just in case. Uh, that's actually the um, choke, not the throttle. That one would be the throttle. Which is by mechanical rod. The rod going all the way down to the throttle pedal. But um, yeah, that just shows you, you can just hear how sweet the little engine is. The exhaust goes down to this cross box, but it just then empties itself under the car. There is no full exhaust system on these vehicles. Um, so that's the uh, handbrake mechanism coming down here. Oddly, these were the only two CVs that had a handbrake on the right hand side. On later right-hand drive, the handbrake was always on the passenger side. It's just so narrow, they can get away with it. Um, we'll just shut her off again. Thank you, dear. She is so sweet. Oh, and I forget, you actually have to latch those. So, yeah, the, the engine ends here. This is all engine. And then we've got the gearbox behind. Uh, the drum brakes are inboard. Here we can more clearly see the universal joint on the drive shaft. And it's a four-speed gearbox. Or, as um, Walter Beckier, the chap who designed the engine, um, said, um, a, a three-speed with overdrive, because he knew it needed a four-speed gearbox. Um, but the Citroen management wouldn't let him when he was developing it. So um, on the f earliest two CVs, they go one, two, three, S. And uh, S standing for whatever the French for overdrive is. I am not expert in French. But um, over here... We can see, I'm just going to cover up the chassis number, but there's the um, original plaque, an SAZ. So AZ, um, because it's an A-series Citroen and Z was the first sort of upgrade, and uh, S for slough. Um, so yeah, all good times. But yeah, I think they look fantastic with a bonnet open, these early ripples. Um, it really does remind you of their simplicity. Uh, let's drop the bonnet again. There we go, and there we go, and then we turn that, Urgh. she's locked. Right, we shall turn our attention indoors. So it's like I say, um, suicide doors, so they open nice and wide to allow um, elegant entry. The seats just sit in holes in the floor and tip quite readily, so you can pull them out with one hand and uh, turn them into picnic seats. And then you can just sit down and enjoy your day. I mean, it doesn't get any sim more simple than that, does it? Um, I now need to try and get that back in. I bet it, they're not as easy to get in, but um, we'll try. There we go, get the seat back in. 
Um, try and line up with the peg holes. Where are the holes? And that's how you adjust the seat position as well. You can just move it forward depending on where you want to sit. So there we go, that's the seat reinstalled. I can now climb aboard to take you through the um, vast array of controls. Um, I'm quite confused by that. I'm hoping that isn't important. It's a later edition um, indicator stalk. But yeah, in front of the driver, you have an ammeter. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, I thought it was a charge light, but I'm not sure why you'd have a charge light when you've also got an ammeter. It doesn't work, so we shall ignore it. And you have a switch for on and off. And what that's turning on is this remarkable interior light. Um, only I can't see it, might need the ignition on. There we go. No, it doesn't seem to be turning that on at all. Oh, there we go. Now we have, because French, even though English. So that's your interior light and light comes flooding through there to blind you, or you turn it round and it directs all the light down onto this speedometer. And uh, yeah, that's entirely crazy. Uh, we will get to wipers because that speedometer drives the wipers for reasons of madness. And that's your manual overdrive if you're in traffic because if you're not moving, the speedometer's not going round, it's not powering your wipers. But it does mean the faster you go, the faster the wipers go. So that's kind of logical. Uh, that's the adjuster for the um, vent down there to allow flies into your eyes. Uh, this little tray is quite nice, the little ashtray. Feels like Bakelite. Um, that's the pull cable for the starter. You have to pull it quite a long way and the choke control, which seems to come out all on its own. And this would be the original trafficator knob. Um, so you'd turn it that way or that way to operate the trafficators. Trafficators don't work on this one. It doesn't have them rather, it has indicators instead. Uh, the gear lever is standard 2CV fare. So that's first gear. Push it back in just with your thumb is my recommendation. And it's the spring across into the next gate. And now we're into second finger there back out for third and then into neutral twist and you're into fourth at least i think that's fourth yes i think that must be fourth that feels remarkably like second to me but yeah it, it makes more sense when you're driving along anyway so we could do that again first second clutch down third fourth there we go that's that's doing it properly so now we've got the angle on for fourth believe me it feels a lot more um precise out on the road i think it, i think the bushes have gone in this tube which make it a little clonky here is the handbrake which i haven't deployed so yeah pull it out and twist it to lock it the pedals um which operate in a manner you might hope for there's the clutch there's the brake and the throttle pedal has temporarily come adrift for reasons I'm not entirely um, sure about and uh, there's the ignition still turned on turn that off down here a light control um, so that's side no that's headlights and that's headlights and um, that's main beam and that's side lights so um, veal and root and um, yeah if, the, if it's down then you're switching between headlamps and headlamps and if it's up you're switching between um, side lights and main beam so it, it, it all makes sense honest it really really does but um of course classic 2cv uh, just close that all the headroom in the world um these seats are sagging a little so it feels a, a bit sporty but um yeah good visibility um sitting kind of next to the b pillar that's kind of standard 2cv fare but you know look we've got some visors both sides i mean that's that's luxurious in itself not all 2cvs had that in the 1980s and a tiny little um mirror that has seen rather better days uh, unfortunately but um yeah all of the charm top in the back oh incidentally the doors can just simply be lifted off um that's how they do it and that's the same front and rear so you just literally lift the door straight off the car. Uh, sometimes they have a little cap there to stop anyone doing that. Um, but the fronts are the same. The bonnet is the same. That's also on a sliding hinge. And the boot lid also uses the same sliding hinge technique. Although this one looks a little um, manicured 
is maybe the word. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about opening that, to be honest. So we'll, we'll look at the boot this way instead and uh, hop in here. And there you can see um, very similar shape floor to um, later two CVs, spare wheels sitting down there. Again, just a 15 inch item, all very exposed in terms of metal work. And um, one reason these cars can be a little noisy as one drives along the road. But, um, oh, all the character in the world. And talking of driving down the road, I think that's probably a good thing to do next, don't you? All right then, here we go. Put her into first gear. I can take my foot completely off the clutch pedal because we have the traffic clutch. And then all I've got to do is accelerate and we're away. And it sounds just like my 2CV, it's just an awful lot slower. Oh, we must stop and look for trains. So I can select first and away we go. So that 425 cc engine is working quite hard it's getting a bit windy let's close that window still got that one open can open the um the vent a little for a bit of air there we go oh this is brilliant i was worried this would feel horrendous because these are so much slower and so much less powerful than 80s 2CVs, but it feels great. We're going to go for top. There we go, top gear achieved. Oh, it's getting a bit bumpy. So friction dampers rather than um, telescopic shock absorbers. They're basically just discs and you tighten a screw and that friction is what um, stops you um, rolling around or bouncing around quite so much. You'll still roll plenty. Look at that. Woohoo! Still a 2CV. All oh, the brakes aren't quite up to the standards of the later disc drum setup. In theory, I can do clutchless gear changes. But that's a theory only. Woohoo! That's my bag flying around in the back there. Whoa, we're over 30. Oh, it's getting bouncy now. Forty-five. Fifty miles an hour. Oh, little bird. Sorry, little bird. It wasn't expecting a Ripple one in 2CV to go that fast. That's the problem. very strange to drive a British assembled French car in Australia. Foot is welded to the floor at this point. In terms of windscreen wipers, they can be hand operated like so. Or you attach them to the speedo cable like so. These need adjusting, I would suggest. I guess it doesn't rain much here. 
just amazing. We're cruising along at about 45. Must be a slight hill because my foot is flat to the floor. This is quite relaxing and the speed limit in France is only 80 kilometers an hour anyway, which we're very nearly achieving. This is so much better than I expected and I'm a 2CV here. Now the one problem these cars do have is that the drive shafts as we've seen are just simple universal joints. So if you turn too tightly they can start clanking but you just slip the clutch and it smooths it out. cars are so hilarious. It's got a good horn. Right, I'm going to try an emergency stop while we've got no one behind. Oh, that's not bad. Pretty good, I'd say. I've now lost neutral. There we go. I put my foot on the clutch for the emergency stop. I don't have to do that because I have a traffic clutch. So I can just stop. That feels very peculiar. Well, we have got... Um, uh, I've driven electric cars that behave the same. And again, I can just come straight off the throttle. And there we go. And stop. So effectively, it's a different system, but it's the same as my Invercar, which has a centrifugal clutch. So basically, as the engine revs come up, it engages and, and we're away. Very simple, very effective. I think the bush is a bit worn in the gear lever. So we've got the headlamp switch here which I've described the only other switch is for the um, interior light which is aiming at the speedometer some say these have aircraft heritage that might be possible Oy! oh I'm loving this And uh, now we're back, we can test her off-road abilities. And um, she rides over the field very well. If only I had a basket of eggs. Back at the tractor museum your tractory friends. Ah. Thank you little car. Well there we go. I think the um, 2CV in slow built form is a very interesting car and I think it lives up to the motto for power, less is more. T-shirts available at hubnut.org. Um, I, I was worried it would be um, really, really slow after driving um, later 2CVs, especially as mine now is now a fire breathing 652cc monster. But um, actually they're hugely charming and go surprisingly well, albeit surprisingly well with one person aboard on flat roads. Uh, load luggers, they're definitely not. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. I will say thank you very much to Glenn at the Vintage Tractor Shed um, for letting me drive this car. This this car lives here. It shares its um, time with these wonderful farm vehicles, which is very fitting for a car designed for French farm workers. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and I shall see you in a later video. Farewell. <laughs>